Welcome to a new and a probably a final video on this automated garden irrigation series. Previously, I have done many videos where I talked about, you know, how this logic works, how I build it and how I build the UI. But today I just want to focus on for those who are not really interested in the details, but want to see how you can download it and you can make it your own. And also, you know, talk about the working logic and everything. So for those who have viewed this before and also who may be using this, uh, the only thing I want to say is that I found a small, you know, typo in the code. So the link that is going to be in the video description, which is the same link as before, now has a newer version of the code, which doesn't have this typo. So if you're using it, probably you want to download this anyway. So let me just uh, go through a couple of slides and then we are going to switch to the node red flow. So just to better understand the, the way this uh, garden irrigation or this automation works is uh, something that I found online and it's probably not the only way you can do it. Maybe there are better, free, better ways of doing that, especially if you have uh, better ways of measuring information for you know, how your uh, garden is doing or your soils or your vegetation is doing. But this particular flow says that there are a couple of ways how the water gets into your garden and then how it basically loses water. So first of all that you see here, the first arrow is just going to represent that uh, the water is used from the soil by the plants as they, you know, they grow and they consume water and of course by evaporating. So this is something that uh, reduces the amount of moisture in your um, uh, in your soil that you want to replenish with uh, uh, with either sprinkling or it's get replenished whenever the rain uh, drops. So the way this logic is going to work is basically just going to create this rolling calculation of what is the well basically calculated uh, soil moisture uh, yeah soil moisture or content of water in your soil. And then if that is a, let's say, a negative value, meaning that your soil is probably dry, then it's going to schedule the irrigation. So this is going to depend on whether it has rained in the past couple of days or in the last 24 hours. And then what was the temperature in the last, again, in the last day from which we are going to calculate or assume how much water the, uh, your garden needs. So this calculation is, is actually very simple because the, the logic is also fairly simple. So first of all, we have a table which says that for these maximum temperatures of the day, how much water is needed in your garden. So that's all in millimeters. So let's say if uh, you have 35, mm, uh, 35 degrees or 95 Fahrenheit or over uh, on a particular day, then on that day, your garden needs eight millimeters of water. And of course, as the temperature uh, goes down, the, num uh, the amount of water that you need is going to be reduced. Let me change the view just to make sure that I'm not blocking anything. So what we need to do in, um, at the end of the day or well, any point in the day is to say, OK, what was the maximum temperature of the day? From that, we are going to calculate uh, the, uh, the amount of water which is needed. So that is going to be a negative value. And also we are going to see what was the rainfall. Uh, if there was any you know, rain or on the same period. So we are going to add that. <clears throat> and also we are going to add if we have ran the irrigation. So obviously that is going to introduce water into the soil. And then we do this very simple calculation and we see, okay, is the value is less than zero or more than zero? If it's less than zero, we need to schedule the irrigation. And of course, when you schedule the irrigation, that is going to add water into the system again. So then this calculation is going to, you know, go up the next day. And you can clearly see that uh, there is going to be, maybe there is going to be a balance. So for me, uh, I said that, if the temperature is above 35 degrees, then I need to irrigate my garden pretty much every single day just to make sure that, uh, you know, the lawn stays, stays green and the flowers and everything, uh, they, still, uh, they stay healthy. So the way I configured my system is that whenever I run the irrigation, so I go through my usual cycle of opening the zones for a set amount of time, then at the end, I'm just going to add eight millimeters of water. Um, so that uh, garden, so this irrigation is equivalent to eight millimeters of rainfall. 
And of course, you can also measure this if you just put a cup in the lawn and then you run the irrigation, then you can measure how much uh, that is in you know millimeters or inches or whatever that you use. So that's the that's the logic. And, and of course, you can fine tune this uh, by you know changing these values or changing the amount of value that you put in when you irrigate the uh, irrigate the garden. So that's uh, really up to you. So whenever I was fine tuning the system, I again, as I said, my uh, routine or my you know rule of thumb was that if I have this you know much temperature or the very hot days in the summer i really need to run the irrigation every single day and from this it was you know pretty much uh, you know i was just using these numbers and it was working fine i mean i've done an entire summer now with this irrigation system and it seems to be working just fine i'm going to show you some stats a little bit later on i've already mentioned how this whole logic works and uh, as i said it it is it basically has two input data is that it monitors the outside temperature and it also monitors the rainfall so uh, the rainfall i only really need this information let's say once a day the outside temperature obviously needs to be monitored uh, continuously because then the logic is going to calculate what was the maximum temperature for the day and of course a certain point of time which is going to be late in the evening where you don't expect you know any higher temperatures or maybe early in the morning you run that calculation that I just explained and at the end of the calculation the system is going to decide do I need to run the irrigation or not and I usually schedule the irrigation early in the morning like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. so I uh, you know run the calculation before that actually I run it at 11 a.m. sorry 11 p.m. but I think it would be better just to run it maybe just half an hour or an hour before so you are not going to lose that time between you know running the calculation and actually turning the uh, irrigation because if let's say if there is a big storm in that period then you shouldn't really be irrigating the only reason i'm running at 11 o'clock because i wanted to keep an eye on the calculation so i get the notifications before i go to bed and also the way i calculate the um uh, the rainfall is not like a rolling average for the last 24 hours but it's actually from midnight to midnight so that's how I could cover most of the day. And because I use Telegram for most of my messaging, the system usually just sends me some Telegram messages that you can see at the end of the day. So it says if irrigation is scheduled, then it shows what's the maximum temperature, what was the rain today, and then what was the water needed, which is again is calculated from that uh, table that I showed on previous chart, and then what's the, the balance. So it's minus 4.5 millimeters, so it's below zero, so the irrigation is scheduled. And if it will be positive, then there is no message because uh, there is no need to run the sprinklers and i also included this second one but that's very specific to mine how i keep track of my cistern and uh, making sure that my valve pump is running but that's not really the scope of the the actual irrigation logic and as i said you need two pieces of information for this calculation to work you need a rain gauge which actually going to uh, tell you how much millimeters of rain uh, that was in the last 24 hours. So I'm using a very old Maplin weather station, which actually appears that it is dying because it stopped working and I tried to fix it. And then now it came back to life, but I'm not sure when it's going to break. But that is sending a continuous uh, you know total rainfall so i have a fairly complicated logic which calculates hourly daily and weekly rainfall but you can get the really nice uh, sort of uh, wi-fi weather stations i'm looking at a couple of different models uh, from the you know you can have echo it and then there are a lot of different uh, manufacturers that make uh, you know branded products of the same probably like generic manufacturers so i'm looking at a german company which is called the frogit but uh, there are a couple of them and uh, most of them uh, actually can report uh, rain in the last 24 hours so that would be the best measurement for this particular application or the best measure for this particular application because then you don't have to calculate anything you just query what is the rain for uh, the last 24 hours and i do recommend that you use an actual weather station as opposed to like a weather service um, well I would recommend I, I would say that I recommend it for my area because uh, what I notice that I get like you know rain forecast in the in the TV and the radio and then maybe it rains the other part of the town but there nothing rains uh, where I live 
So sometimes uh, the summer storms in the area where I live tend to be very localized. So what you can get from a weather forecast is not necessarily what is going to happen in real life. So that's one of the options, but as I said, there are many different weather stations and the way you get the data out of it is going to differ quite a lot. And also, I, uh, you also need um, a reliable source of outside temperature. And that also gets a little bit complicated because uh, the type of weather stations, for example, this one, obviously needs to be out in the open in order to you know, measure the rain. But what I noticed that the temperature measurement part, which is this unit right here, it tends to report a much higher temperature when the sun shines on it, uh, regardless of these grills and everything. So for me, I actually uh, built a separate weather station just for temperature, which is in a shady part of uh, my garden outside a tree, or sorry, under a tree. So it's not affected by sunlight, or at least it's not affected by that much. So again, you need these two measurements. And now I also want to show you some stats. And... Um, so, well, that's the uh, dashboard page, which is generated by this uh, program. Uh, and you can see that that was the outside temperature. So that was pretty much the peak of the summer for us. So you can see that the temperature was like just, well, just above 35 degrees, pretty much every single day. The peak was about 35 degrees. And then uh, the, uh, this uh, dark blue is the rain and this light blue is the balance. So the at 11 p.m. the system would calculate the the balance so the water because of the water needed this balance drops bef uh, below zero and then I uh, water the garden in the morning at 5 a.m. and I add that uh, 8 millimeters back so you can see that from you know whatever value it was it jumps down to minus let's say 4.5 I'm not really sure yeah so 3.5 minus 8 or minus five, and then it adds eight millimeters again. So then in the next day, it was again very hot, above 35 degrees. So water needed is eight millimeters. So again, it drops down to minus, and it keeps continuing like that. So this is the cycle when it rains every single day, and then the irrigation is just scheduled for every single night. But then the weather started cooling down. Um, and I might have restarted Node Red, so this is why the colors are different now because it started redrawing the, um, the chart. But you can see that the, the, there is no more, you know, peak of plus 35, only like, you know, like low 30s. And then again, this uh, uh, saw tooth pretty much continues, but you can probably uh, see as well that this negative dip starts to go up as there is less water needed because of the lower temperature. And at some point when the calculation runs at 11 p.m., it is no longer negative. So there is no water scheduled, which means that on the next day, the, uh, because of, again, water is needed, then it drops down to minus, uh, to a minus figure again. So this is a, this is a nice case where it just skipped one day because then it just kept irrigating every single day and it wasn't that hot anymore. So it just skipped this day. And then the next day it, well, based on this figure, it must have irrigated again. So, it was, I wanted to include this because it pretty much just shows how the system is working and it's uh, really adapting to the changes in temperature. And well, in this case, it's only the changes in temperature. And then a couple of days later, I think maybe that was, yeah, yeah, maybe that was the next day. So you can see that this is where it skipped one irrigation here. So it was done, it was running the irrigation the next day, but then we had some rain as well. So it's not, it wasn't too much rain, but it was just more rain than uh, what the uh, the plants were needing based on, again, lower temperature here. So you can see that the max was only 21 degrees. So the water needed is only three millimeters, but we had, well, the previous day we had some rain. So actually now the balance goes up because probably there was like four and a half millimeters of rain. So that's plus four and a half millimeters minus let's say three so uh, it still adds a little bit to the balance and then finally i think this is probably the next day or the day after then obviously there was no irrigation here on the next day we still had enough uh, moisture in the uh, in the soil so there was no irrigation here as well but then the nice weather came back again you can see 
well it's sort of 22 degrees and it just kept reducing this balance where it uh, at this point this was negative so it must have run the irrigation here and that's the same chart again just that the colors changed but i think what really happened here no it's what happened really here is uh, another thing which i also um, didn't mention just yet is that it also calculates uh, or takes this chance of rain and this uh, this comes from weather service and whenever the chance of rain is higher than a certain percentage, I think I configured 80%, 80 then it skips the irrigation. So you can see here that the balance was negative, but it did not schedule the irrigation because otherwise it would have jumped up. But on the next day, we indeed had some rain. So you can see that uh, um, on this day, the, the balance was increased by this amount of rain, which was, let's say, 7.9 millimeters but it was still 17 degrees so the system calculated that we still need two millimeters and i think actually what happened here is that this was probably still a little bit below zero so then an irrigation was scheduled so this is why we had a jump up here at 5 a.m so <laughs> this is one of those cases where yes uh, it was scheduled to rain and it did rain but the rain wasn't enough to offset the th last uh, or the previous three days when the, 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 the garden wasn't watered. So again, the system decided that it needs to run the irrigation and well, it did. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the UI because you already seen the UI from the screenshots. So I'm going to focus on the code and I'm going to show you that, oops, uh, oops, sorry, something wrong with my scrolling. So in the, um, in the link that you will find the video description, you will find this much code that you can see on the screen. So this is the whole irrigation computer. So I'm just going to walk through what uh, you need to do in order to make this your own. So let's just zoom in. And first of all, there is a settings here and then it stores all the system settings uh, for you know how the calculation is going to run first of all it has all these temperatures which pretty much corresponds to that table that i shown in i think on the third slide so this is uh, the temperatures and the, the amount of water this is needed so it says if the temperature is about 35 degrees then you need eight millimeters of water so this um the the code is not really, really looking at any um uh, units or uh, so if you you know decide to use Fahrenheit and inches then just may uh, just be consistent so configure these as Fahrenheit and inches but to make sure that the data that you are feeding in uh, matches the uh, you know the same unit and uh, and that's the configuration for the chance of rain so if the chance of rain is over 80 percent then the irrigation is going to be postponed or even if it thinks that it needs to irrigate, it's just not going to do that. And uh, the MOX messages is just the number of messages that the system stores, uh, which you are going to see in the UI, but it, I didn't include in the screenshot. Um, you can watch my previous video on that if you are really interested. So that's it. So you, you make those changes or you just leave it as it is. It doesn't really matter. And then you have three inputs. Well, I said two, but actually the third input is the, um, uh, the chance of rain so you need an input here uh, for uh, temperature so the payload is going to contain the temperature value so let's say 21 21.5 or 83 95 so whether it's celsius uh, or fahrenheit doesn't really matter it just has to be a number and then it goes in here and it sets the topic to temperature and this is the rainfall so it sets the again the topic needs to be rainfall and the payload needs to be the actual value so that's the value of the the rain for the last 24 hours because the calculation runs every 24 hours and then finally you have a chance of rain so the topic is chance of rain and the payload needs to be the chance of rain which is a number between 0 and 100 so i have configured this for my so this comes from, I think, open, open weather map. That's my example. And the rainfall comes from my rainfall sensor that I showed in the previous slides.
And then you have one more thing, which is uh, the irrigation. Uh, so that's a topic of irrigation. And then that's the eight millimeters I said. So every time the irrigation runs, you run this. Uh, uh, so the, the data goes in here. So that adds the eight millimeters of rain uh, to your calculation, uh, sorry, to your balance. And of course you can change that to whatever value you think you are irrigating. And finally, you need a logic, uh, sorry, an inject node. And that's the one which runs the calculation. So as I said, for me, it's configured to 11 p.m. every single day. And this is just something that I wanted to load some data that you can just completely ignore. Probably I'm going to, actually, I think I'm going to delete this because I only, I was only using this for, for testing purposes and probably same with this inject node. I was only using this for testing purposes. So then everything goes into this calculation mode and you don't have to make any changes here. If you want to understand how this works, I have a separate video on, on that one. And then we have a bunch of stuff here, which is mostly for the UI representation. And here again, you see two different UIs because uh, I explained it in the previous document, uh, sort of previous videos that I started working on this uh, when uh, Dashboard 1.0 was available and then uh, Dashboard 2.0 came out. So I started adding the UI components for Dashboard 2.0, but I still kept the end. So this part here, is uh, that just shows the current values on the dashboard. And uh, uh, this is dashboard 2.0 and all this is dashboard, dashboard 1.0. So again, depending on which one you use, you just delete the ones that you don't need. Um, next one is this section of the code uh, that draws the chart that you have seen before. And again, we have dashboard 2.0 and we have dashboard 1.0. So these lighter shades of, uh, mm, well, actually it looks like that the colors are a little bit all over the place. No, no, this is a dashboard 2.0. Yeah. So the, um, uh, this darker shade of almost like a teal color, that's dashboard 1.0 and these uh, slightly lighter ones, I think that's uh, dashboard 2.0. So that's does the uh, the charts again. Just delete uh, either this or that, depending on which dashboard you use. You don't have to do anything, and it's just exactly same with the messages. So that's dashboard 1.0. That's dashboard 2.0 messages. Okay, and then finally you have this piece of code here, which uh, actually uh, this piece here. So I'm going to include this, oops, I'm going to include this in the export, but that's very specific to my setup. So this is the one that you have to re, uh, you know, redo and based on what you need, because um, in this junction, the data comes out whenever you need to run the irrigation. So from this, I uh, send myself the telegram message. So this is where this telegram message is getting uh, generated that I had a screenshot of uh, previously. So you can use this to send an email or you know whatever messaging that you use. And also uh, this goes into the section which actually triggers the irrigation. So for me, the irrigation is uh, controlled by a PLC. So I send the data to a PLC that, oh, please run this irrigation. So you would need to replace this with you know whatever logic you have. Um, either you send it to send this information again, a trigger to a, like a third party irrigation controller, or whatever that you use, or if you're using your own, you know, solenoids and that sort of stuff relays, then you need to trigger them at this point, whenever a message comes through from this junction. And uh, yeah, and of course, uh, yeah, you, I have this six hour delay here. And the only reason I have this because this irrigation computer for me uh, sends a trigger that at 11 o'clock that I need to run the irrigation, which I usually schedule like 5 a.m. in the morning. So it sends the message out that, oh, don't forget to run the irrigation. So after six hours, uh, which is the difference between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. in the morning. That's when this data goes all the way back here to add the eight millimeters when, you know, technically the, the sprinklers run. Uh, 
and that basically just completes the cycle so that's the sort of the up movement in the chart that you have seen in the uh, screenshots uh, uh, that I showed a couple of minutes ago and and to be honest that's it so that that's that that's all you need and um, yeah you only need to change this bit here and the actual trigger logic and maybe if you want to add your own messaging you can do the same as well but uh, that makes the whole thing tick and uh, and of course uh, you just need to keep this running sort of like all the time so because all these calculation that it does every single day that's a rolling calculation and or the way I've configured these um, function node which again you don't have, have to understand but everything is stored in a context variable which is called the voter data no everything is sorry not the flow variable everything is stored in a context variable so if you click on this irrigation computer and you refresh you see that you see uh, two things uh, the data and the settings so the settings come from here and the data is that that's the data that it uses like okay what was the maximum temperature what's the uh, the rolling average what was the um, uh, you know messages you can see everything here and I've configured this to be stored on a file so if node red restarts this uh, it can automatically retrieve the information from the file so again that assumes that in your node red settings.js you have a context storage which is uh, named as file so because then you know all this code refers to this context storage that you can see here so every time i read the context or i save the context i use the context storage file which points to the file system so it doesn't save it in memory but it's uh, it saves it in a, in a file on the sd card hard drive whatever so anytime the node red restarts or the computer restarts it is able to retrieve the latest values from the file so it's not getting lost so that's an important thing otherwise it would just restart from basically zero balance which is not a big thing but that it means that it might you know trigger the uh, the irrigation when it should not do but it's not a big deal either but i just wanted to point it out okay so i think that should be the really the end of it so as i said you will find the link uh, to this flow in the video description and of course you can import this flow uh, using this uh, you know import functionality you can import it and um, i haven't really used any special um, nodes in this particular flow other than the UI elements for either dashboard 1.0 or dashboard 2.0. Again, if you are only using one of them, you will get some errors that some of these nodes are not recognized. But again, if you're not using them, you can just delete them. So there is going to be some placeholder stuff here with some red <coughs> dotted lines. You just select them and delete them because those are the uh, dashboard items that you are not using. But then the rest are all standard nodes that will be delivered by a node red like a beta standard node red installation so you don't really have to do anything else and that's pretty much it so hopefully that's the end of it if you are using this let me know in the comment section or if you have some other ideas also let me know but um, i guess that should be all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video